All right. We've been, we're back to reacting though. Okay. We have not reacted enough. And I apologize, React Enjoyers. I do want to say, in case you guys didn't know, the Salty Mike Reacts channel has hit, has hit 10,000 subscribers. All right, big deal. Uh, you know, a lot of negativity around my React channel in the Star Citizen community, but it seems like a lot of people like it. So I'm going to keep doing them. And it's fun. I really enjoy it. Everybody seems to enjoy it. And uh, yeah, that's really all it comes down to. So we're going to start out with Level Cap Gaming. When Star Citizen devs are honest. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. When Star Citizen devs are honest. Star Citizen just used one of their latest Inside Star Citizen promotional episodes to showcase the team ah. failing. Normally, Star Citizen's weekly YouTube content is used to showcase the game's triumphs and hype up upcoming tech, so it's interesting to see them showcase a failure. But fans have been loving it and praising them for the transparency. This game project describes itself as an open I'm not gonna lie, I don't get this. development process, where fans should more or less be aware of what's going on behind the scenes. But this often isn't the case, and for the most part, fans are in the dark when it comes to some of the progress and failures happening behind the scenes. At the end of the day, CIG needs to keep pulling in fan funding, so to risk showing the game in a negative light could impact that. And by its own nature, there is incentive I mean, here, here's the thing I don't get, though, is they don't need to keep pulling in fan funding. They've pulled in funding from outside sources at this point. They don't have to necessarily. You know what I mean? But they don't want to. That's the difference. To basically not be too transparent when it could impact the perception of the game, but perhaps they're easing up on this. The last episode of Inside Star Citizen showcased a review gate failure of the new Santok Yai alien fighter craft. I'm, dude, really? Here's, here's my thing with this, okay? Here's my thing with this. Look at this. How important on the you know, laundry list of things that need to be done to make Star Citizen a reality is this thing. Look at it. From 1 to 10, it's literally a 1. Being honest about being late on a ship sail for Alien, like it's literally being late on a ship sail for Alien Week. Very cool looking ship that will better round out the alien combat ship lineup, but its unconventional design of rotating thrusters in a ball style cockpit has led to a lot of first time challenges for the devs. It was interesting to hear them describe their internal failure rates, but also how their internal review system did its job in preventing them from moving forward with a project that just wasn't in a good enough state. They also mentioned that the review failure happens fairly frequently, so it's not like but it was like from an art standpoint where's the review gates for all the other stuff in the game this was a rare or unexpected issue but nonetheless it was nice to see some transparency with the process i think a large portion of star citizen fans are older working it. professionals who can handle seeing the inner workings of Malikina. a development process even when it's not a successful outcome that said this is a pretty light failure compared to some of the more catastrophic things that could happen. Like if their next major tech push towards server meshing hits a huge roadblock, would we also be hearing about this failure? No. Or would that information be kept? Of course it would be kept quiet. And it probably is already happening and being kept quiet. That's like, this is why I'm like, why are we patting them on the back for this? This is so ridiculous to me because you, yeah, exa I, I literally saw it just as I was about to say it. Who do we already forget iCash? Do we already forget where they found out that iCash was i cr trash and then said, "Well, we got to figure out back to the drawing board." Never told us they were going back to the drawing board. Still uh constantly talked about uh persistence, uh uh 
depths, uh, uh, base building, and all these other things throughout the that remaining year where they were reworking things for something that they didn't even know if it would work, right? Uh, yeah, what about theaters of war, right? On, on these like really key pillars, they don't say anything. I'm not going to pat them on the back for having zero content because they were planning on doing a uh, a big reveal of the Santokiai for Alien Week that they now don't have. So they pivot and go, well, let's just be honest and tell them about it. Thank you. You know, good job. Cool. Uh, you know, you say you're open. You were actually open this time. I'm not patting you on the back for doing what you're supposed to do and what you told us you were going to do. And usually never do. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I'm at with this. Like, why are we patting them on the back for saying some minor thing is going to be late? I just don't see it. I don't see the point. I don't get it behind closed doors. I think we can say that Star Citizen is a very open development process compared to most games, but without question that openness is cherry picked, in part due to the yes. fact that any major sign of weakness or failure would probably introduce a frenzy of anti-Star Citizen media which could negatively impact the funding. I certainly don't envy the team having Positive to dance the line I mean, of how open can we be sure. with this process versus what's actually going to hurt the development process. Now speaking of progress, there's been some more rumblings about a Squadron 42 release date announcement. Squadron 42 is the allegedly massive single player game project that's being developed in parallel to Star Citizen's Persistent Universe and is currently receiving the majority of development focus. Now these rumblings about a potential release date are spurred on by two semi-recent events. The first one being that one of the lead developers estimated a two-year release window at a casual bar citizen meetup event this event was about eight months ago was it was it who i think it was was it aaron roberts because aaron gets pretty drunk at at these events sometimes and just says stupid shit okay i think just to watch the world burn i'm pretty i'm pretty convinced Go, which means that if this prediction was accurate, well, that marketing and hype should be starting to ramp up. Well, I remember when he told me mining was coming in the next patch in 2016. Pretty soon. The other event is that Squadron 42's game package has been removed from purchase on the RSI website, and it's been explained that it's going to see a price update when it comes back. However, it's still not back on sale after a significant period of time, which sounds like maybe there's some more preparation going on. Because, I think that's the I mean, biggest, why like... Why remove something to update the price? You just update the price and call it good, right? It yeah. definitely seems like other factors are in play here. Yeah. Now, the yearly fan event, Citizen Con, is slated to take place towards the end of October this year, which might make for a great place to showcase or announce the release date for this game. So, if there's a big announcement in the works, that seems... Look at that guy. You see him there? Look at that. Look at all those little dots on the screen moving. Damn, that would be sick if we had that, right? That would be like sick. Like the most opportune time to make it. Now, beyond these more ethereal subjects, the much more tangible whole C was also showcased in the latest ISC. This Hell ship yeah. is releasing with the upcoming 3.2 patch and will be by far the most capable hauling vessel in the game, at least when it comes to... I think it's going to be the least capable. Because, boy, I think all we're going to be moving is scrap. I think you're going to be stuck to a very, very few, very few uh, items. Hauling quantity. In fact, while its cargo racks are extended, it looks extremely long, possibly able to rival some of the longest flyable ships like the 890 Jump. But we'll have to wait and see what the actual final dimensions are. The ship itself looks fantastic. It's much larger and more detailed than I ever thought the whole series would be, and it features some awesome transformation visuals and even a very brief showcase of the cargo loading process. That it would be fun to try to pirate. Yeah, I mean, there's what is there? There's a uh, 4,000 SCU, right? 
And if you do the 32 SU, it's it's only about 100 plus. It's, it's just 100 plus boxes. Um, and that's that shouldn't be too bad to move as long as, you know, your, your multi-tool tractor beam can move those big pieces. And I think that they will in the initial re release, most likely. But, yeah, I mean, if we start getting 32 SU boxes, I think piracy is going to be a lot simpler. You're not going to be stuck there for an hour you know, filling up a, a C2 or whatever. Portion of the demo did look a I think you're also going to have uh, other options for ships to pirate to now because you only have to move a couple boxes. Be it'll be sick. A little bit placeholder where the ship flies into a loading zone in space and then cargo seems to magically appear on the outside of the ship. That's Bro, I do not understand this. I do not understand this either. I love that they are doing a uh a band-aid i've talked about it a few times i talked about it on my isc react i talked about it on weekend review if the ship can dock at the station why not do it at the dock locations i always thought that, that was kind of weird why do i just float in the middle of nowhere and then the stuff just appears on my ship but i think it's fine uh, i think it's i think it'll be cool i just was like why not just put a dock at the cargo deck you know, just like a docking collar, but maybe that is more work than uh, they had time for or whatever, right? Uh, but I think we'll get there eventually. But I, I will say that I am somewhat disappointed in the way it's being made, but I'm very happy with the fact that it's it's coming in, whether it's in a kind of busted state. Dead if they need to make some of the loading stuff placeholder for the moment just to get the ship into the game, that's absolutely fine by me. What wasn't mentioned during the video was anything about the new hauling missions, I don't know, which Henry. seem imperative to make this ship fill its role. Players were quick to point out that the current trading supplies won't even be able to fill up the volume of this ship, making it somewhat pointless to use over a smaller vessel. It's also un- And, and like CIG knows this. So it just comes down to they know it. Is somebody going to do something about it? Because guess what? They've known about these problems for far too long, in my opinion, where they're like artificially capping what you can trade and all these things just because of their uh, my economy or whatever, right? Because they don't have the dynamic economy for the sake of the economy, whatever that means. Um, I think it, I think it means they're possibly their real bank accounts, so people aren't just spreading uh, billions of gold around the Star Citizen servers and people just buying ships with them. I think that is honestly part of it. But I think the other part of it is right now, if you could just trade endlessly, you make you just make money too easily, right? Uh, I as much as people don't like pirates in the game. Man, we need them because if players are just trading without any risk at all, it's it's such a gold mine in the game. It's it's kind of kind of messed up. You Clear that, you'll be able to unload to at a ground base installation, as the whole series has always been designed more about space freight without planetary landings being a major consideration. It's However, with just about just all the major space. trading spots in the game needing at least one end of that supply and demand route to be on a planet, it's hard to know if this ship will integrate with the current trading system. Hopefully, there's an upcoming ISC that will announce new hauling missions for this ship and other hauler ships in the game. Game. Speaking personally, I've been waiting forever Hopefully. for some sort of hauling gameplay loop. We do know that the devs are working on this specifically, and it's been alleged that it would be tied into the whole series of ships, so maybe we'll see an announcement soon. I made a video a while back showing the space truck. I mean, there is a, uh, today there is an ISC of, of, uh, with the mission team. Maybe they do talk a little bit about. Uh, cargo missions. I don't know, though. I, I think maybe it'll be more of them showing stuff that they've already talked more about uh, and then things that we've seen being worked on in, 
in the month of reports, but I'm really looking forward to that episode. We'll have to Again, see. Lifestyle and Star Citizen, and while it is fun to haul things around the verse and sell them for more at different outposts, the biggest weak spot for it was just the general lack of a mission system specifically catered for that gameplay. So yeah. fingers crossed that we actually hear something soon. Now, overall, patch 3.2 is beginning to fill up with some more significant content. A truly massive arena commander overhaul is in the works, new consignment missions are coming, new outpost locations, the just mentioned Holsey ship will be releasing, possibly new tractor beam stuff, and more. The recent 3.19.1 patch just went live and has some significant improvements to the ASOP terminal response time, which is honestly a huge quality of life improvement since Being you able need to play this terminal nice. to spawn or store any ships in the game. Now, if yeah. they can just give me some better options to sort my ships on the terminal and find what I need quicker, we'll be golden. What do you guys Level. Just buy less ships, man have less referrals i mean come on think about the upcoming star citizen content and the overall transparency of the project do you think the devs should be even more open about their development even if it makes them vulnerable to negative press or should they keep playing it more strategically and what about squadron 42 after so many years of missed release dates and rumors do you think it could actually be right around the corner let me know Listen, I don't think the game is right around the corner. I think that every YouTuber that is making these claims that they're going to that we're going to see a Squadron 42 announcement at CitizenCon are probably uh, you know probably somewhat correct, right? We're seeing an announcement is entirely different than seeing the game released, like the game actually being around the corner. They can announce Star Citizen 20 or you know Squadron 42 2024. They could say that and then come somewhere near when they say the release date is. They could be like, "Up. Oh. You know what all those other game dev companies have been doing?" You know, delaying things because, hey, game development is hard. We're going to do that. Yeah, see that? Look, we're just like Cyberpunk, guys. We're just like them. Hey, remember that? Remember that game you really liked? We're going to make a tweet about how game development's hard and we're going to have to slow it down, right? And it's, it's going to be delayed. So to me, if they make a big Squadron 42 announcement at CitizenCon, guess what? I've seen, over the years, I've seen Answer the Call 2016. I've seen a vertical slice. I've seen uh, the uh, a video of a, a fucking satellite. And I still have no idea how far along the game is. I don't care. I don't care. I care when I am two weeks out of the release of Squadron 42. That's when I care. I care when you actually start showing content of the game that we actually have an opportunity to play. That vertical slice that that probably is that probably isn't even anything anymore. Right? That probably has nothing to do with anything at this point. So that's it. That's how I feel about that. It's whatever in the comments and next up check out that space trucking video i was talking about where we live the life of a space trucker you know As i never always, saw that video watching, i don't think and i'll see you guys next time this is level cap signing off all right thank you level i mean that uh, it really comes down to their open their openness who's excited for hauling missions are you may are you sneak peeking isc elliot Somebody, somebody's going to get a sneak peek on what ISC is about today, maybe, or he's, or he's just trolling us. Who knows? But the, uh, I will say like the openness about the Santokia, sure. It's good. Uh, I just don't know why, um, we feel the need to pat them on the back for doing what they've always said that they would do and haven't really done. And I'll just leave it at that when it comes to the, to you know, at least the the title and thumbnail of this video. Uh, you know, just the general news of what's going on. Halsey is pretty exciting, and 319.1 is a lot better than 318 and 319 that we've had in the past, so...